Well, one of my alarms are going off in terms of the phone, the phone the ringtone. <laughs> Anyways, um, it is uh, 22 hours and 43 minutes into the 24th day of March. <coughs> so it's about quarter to 11. We are just getting going because, well, uh, that's sometimes when it, the way a crash goes. Uh, bizarrely enough, last night, around uh, uh, for most of Tuesday and into a large chunk of Wednesday to 3 o'clock in the afternoon, I was completely worried. I couldn't sleep at all. But the crash didn't hit until around 4 5 o'clock in the evening. That's when the crash hit, and, well, everything fell off from there. So, uh... <laughs> What do I say about things? The challenges are still going on. The dreams are of a... I guess this is what I classify as mundane. Um, where I'm back to being other people in the dream. Oh, having an understanding of the dream, but not necessarily understanding it to the fullest. In terms of some of the bizarreness that goes on in the dreams, it is really, in many cases, quite mind-boggling. Uh, and you really don't make heads or tails on it. As I said before, you know, the dream I had where I had pain in my intestine. I frequently have pain in my intestine, but it had radiated all the way, you know, up and down the sciatic nerve all the way down to the foot. And yet, it translated itself into the dream as a, as a pain in the eye, but the eyeball was uh, <clears throat> several miles away, uh, still connected, but still, you know, several miles away. In other words, I was stretched out. Uh, and like a cartoon, the eyeball bugs out, and there's this long string going, going from where the eyeball is, from where the eyeball is, back to the eye again. Well, this is what it ended up working out like, and let's talk about puzzles within dreams, dreams forming as puzzles, uh, assembly lines, uh, a number of different things where, I know, I, let's see, it, 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 this, the last one I had about the process, the pro plant processing, it was a factory, what were they producing? They were producing children. And you would see the process, how they would manufacture children from, from, from they take the product, the initial product of a child and bring them into adulthood. And in there, you would see that, well, most people would simply be rigid and whatever, and you could see simply the, the child who becomes the adult replacing the adult that was on the assembly line, you know, not necessarily thinking about anything, just sort of following the rules following the mechanism. At the same time, you could also see in, in, in some of the instances there were, were people on the assembly lines who were abusive, who were even sexually abusive, and you see a, a defective product come out. You see how a product, a, an adult, comes out who is defective. And you see in this manufacturing process how this person who did this particular abuse, uh, you see it in a mechanical form as introducing a defect or an error into the system that will eventually become the adult. And now this is, in other words, <laughs> so what happens, imagine seeing an assembly line of people, right, of di different stations you're seeing on the conveyor belt, instead of seeing uh, 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 products, or a robot, or whatever, you see people, you see human beings being assembled. And we are pretty much in a, what we call a factory-oriented uh, society, where people are treated like uh, built cogs and, 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 and components that will standardly fit into society. They will not think of anything in terms of really be, being different. They will not sort of push the boundaries. Uh, they will be as everybody else is. And the abuse is ignored. It's not considered as a factor as to why someone may be defective. 
But this has to, it eventually has to change. But the thing is, is this is what I'm seeing. And it, is it, it takes you a while to sort of go through things to think about it, to, to, to sort of re re review how you felt about that, you know, and as you think about, okay, what is that, you know. And for me, the, the interpretation is not necessarily that deep, it's just sort of, it, it's what I saw. I'm explaining to you what I saw. I saw people on an assembly line, teachers, manufacturing adults from children. The product was a child, and they were manufacturing that adult. And it was a process. They passed from one person to, you know, from, from kindergarten all the way through grade 12. Uh, it's a, you have all these people who are involved in creating the product that is an adult. From the raw material that is a child. And a lot of people say, well, I, I, why do you become a teacher? Because I enjoy molding young minds. They're making something. They're manufacturers. The question is, do you ever question the quality of what they produce? Is there any quality control in terms of what they produce? Well, what we're seeing now is proof that is is actually quite evident that they're not. Nobody is required to produce any degree of of, of qualification other than meeting within the system guidelines that will perpetuate the system. In other, well, in other words, the system is designed as a self-perpetuating system. It doesn't need a head. It doesn't need a, a, a control mechanism. It the, the programming is sufficient that it continues on its own. But what you see happens is that, now thinking about this, you have the errors in there. What happens when that error becomes an adult is an introduced to the new system, introduces the system. Well, that error is going to continue because they're going to they're going to create more errors. In other words, you have deviations in the system, you have defects in the system that will cause the system itself to become defective. And this is sort of the process that we're seeing now is that we they have the great idea of you know, let's educate everybody, but how are you going to do this? How what education would be standard for everybody? And we see that it's not standard for everybody. That, 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 that people have different experiences. They take their experiences into the environment, the, the education environment, the factory environment. And it's either dealt with in terms of dealing with the issues that the person is pro a child has happened, have it, or it's made worse because there's somebody there abusing the situation. And the thing is, the abuse I saw, abuse on both sides from both males and females. The male side was, pri in terms of the male uh, uh, assembly line worker, uh, were uh, were sexually abusive. Well, the women tended to be more psychologically abusive. They would tend to be more verbally abusive. So you can take your pick, and each produced its own set of damages, its own set of defects. So these are the dreams I'm having now. So. so it, it, Again, I wasn't. I wasn't there necessarily present in the dream. I was sort of set, set back as an observer. But in other dreams, I'm there as part of the dream itself, part of the scenario, and at the same time set back. So, uh, how one thing turns into the other is not necessarily understood. I don't understand at this point in time. These are just different things the way they are. And, of course, it uh, remains to be seen how these things will end up evolving themselves. Anyways, uh, I will be doing a second test, a final test on this device here. It's a 2 terabyte uh, uh, solid state hard drive. It works on my phone, uh, so it turns the phone into a good sized laptop with a 2 terabyte. Uh, a uh, hard drive system in it, so it's a fully functional laptop. And I'll be doing the, the, the stress test are, is typically surrounding uh, the uh, large video files of two, 2.5 gigabytes. Like this will turn out to be uh, a 10 minute video is, is, is 1.5 gigabytes, almost to 2 gigabytes. Uh, and it's hard to transport the stuff around, so I want to see how things transport. 
I want to see how they sort of evolve, how they how they develop, uh, a number of different things. And, and, and this is sort of will, will provide a sort of a stress test and give me a lot more space on the editing desk. That's going to be the editing desk uh, than I currently have now. And it's also it's also the second camera. It's also the, the second camera. So I now I have a two camera uh, vlog where I can have different cameras set up around different places and uh, vlog as I need to. Well, it is the 26th day of March. It is uh, just about three hours and 31 minutes into the day. And once again, we are vlogging from bed. Well, others in terms of their routines will fake getting out of bed and, oh, they look well undressed and stuff like that. I'm not here. And this is, that we're not, this is not the morning routine. Uh, this is uh, how the schedule goes sometimes. I'm now in a situation where I am in an oscillating sleep pattern where I sleep for a bit, and then I'm awake for a bit, and then go back to bed again, and uh, so on and so forth. And that's where we are now, as I'm just sort of switching from one position to the next. Uh, I've been awake for about mm, a half hour, just mulling things over. The dreams are kind of more about experience, and I've added to my experience, my understanding of my experience uh, within the dream. Uh, and, and hey, it's not there are no major milestones, just sort of uh, a continuance on the path. Uh, other than that, uh, I was able to get the, uh, the final tests done on the hard drive that attaches to this device, make turning it into a nice laptop because I've got two terabytes of hard drive space now uh, on here. And so I did a lot of cleaning up. So the editing desk is nice and clear. And uh, I have, uh, basically I'll be doing the 28th and 29th, and probably, possibly into the 1st of March. Uh, and that will give us, because it's now the 26th, we'll be uh, 26 days out. So we're just uh, beyond, the, we're just beyond the three-week three week mark. So uh, so we're, we're, we're back where we need to be. Uh, and uh, we, let's, let's see if I'll try to get it down to, to just uh, 14 days. It'll be 14 days out. And that will be a good distance out. So uh, things are improving. And... Uh, now I'm going to go make myself something to eat, uh, think about things some more in terms of how things ended up going, and then uh, watching some TV. So that's what I'll be doing next. Oh, oh and spring cleaning is on the uh, schedule now. Well, I suppose this is as good as it's going to get. It's still uh, the 26th of March. It is four hours and 40 minutes into the day. I am now uh, finally up. I only I went to bed around midnight. Uh, that's when I was too tired and just kind of knocked off and uh, uh, went to the other realm. The dreams were... <sighs> Not necessarily unusual, but just, you know... There's stuff uh, that you had to kind of think about. They weren't simply something that was very easy or something that was very obvious, but at the same time, uh, well, they were to a certain degree, but at the same time, they still left you with a ponderance that I'm still sort of thinking about now. And it's about sort of the sense of life as you move along where you are and so on and so forth. And uh, right now... And this is kind of the way it is in the gaming. I'm back. To, I'm, I'm off the exciting, the exciting part. I finished one sort of major point and, and, and was there for a bit, enjoyed it, and now I'm leaving and moving on to the next major point. Again, don't know where it is. 
Uh, and that's what I'm saying. This is, I guess, how one thing compares to the other. How how my life as Cyborg Alpha, or our life as Cyborg Alpha, really parallels the gaming. Uh, in that it, 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 is a, it is a lifestyle that requires an enormous amount of patience because things don't come immediately. I'm planning a month, two months out for things. Uh, I'm spring cleaning. I've got some ideas to sort of fix up the place again. But uh, I know when I order, it's not going to be here for another month and a half or something like that. And it's going to have to sort of, I have to sort of adjust to this this sense of holding back my anticipation of what things are going to be because it's not going to happen quickly. It happens in many cases very slowly, but I guess, you know, but th th this is, like I said, this is the way things are. This is the way things go. Uh, some people can handle it and other people can't and just, they just, it, their frustration gets, is too much. And that's where they throw up their hands and say, well, I quit. That's it. Goodbye. <laughs> vloggers get to this point. You see, the vloggers when they when in, when they're ending their vlogs, they're not necessarily ending at a high point. They're actually ending at a low point. And as what's happened is the frustration of what to vlog and how to vlog has gone to them. They're too tired to continue, and they say, "Well, that's it. I've reached my point on the path. I'm happy with what, sort of happy with what I have." And sayonara, see you later. Have a nice life. And this is typically what happens to vlogs. And people say, well, well, vlogs must be easy, but they're not easy. They are a a difficult thing because you have to decide how to film your living because you can't film everything. You basically, your largest window is 20, 25 minutes. That's it. So out of the entire day, you have to capture uh, just 25 minutes that sort of encapsulates everything you do. But what happens if... if the stuff you're doing is sort of everyday stuff. It's boring. Well, then you have a conversation. Do you know how to have the conversation? Do you know how to keep the conversation uh, in line, you know, in terms of keeping it going, keeping it pleasant? You know, the, is your voice... Well, sometimes, the, you can see, my voice is tired. I'm slow. I'm not putting my words together properly. And that's because I'm tired. And it's a it, 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 sitting through those parts of watching the vlog. It is a difficult thing to, to do to sit back and watch it uh, because the thoughts aren't fast paced. They don't come in at a proper cadence, so the discussion is slowed and stilted and sort of, in many ways, painstaking because uh, the point isn't gotten to necessarily <laughs> in, in, in a sufficient manner uh, that would satisfy. A conversation. Now, sometimes in, in conversations, you get off on tangents, you get off on other topics that were connect, sort of interconnected, and never really get back to the original discussion. But uh, that happens as long as the the, the presentation and or, or, or the personality is there, and you are enjoying the conversation. The, you know, in other words, the, the conversations there, uh, then it's okay. But getting to that con the getting to that point of conversation. This is a very difficult thing. Now, why don't uh, why isn't my channel monetized? Why don't I make tons of money on this? Because it's not for that. This is part of my research work. Part of the research work is to find out who the person is, who the scientist is, and how do they come to the conclusions they came to, or observations. If they give sim sim simply giving you observation, that's what I'm doing. I'm not giving you conclusions. I'm giving you observations. Well, how did I get to my observations? You know, what's my background? How does my background influence what I see and how I see it? How do I form my perspective? My perspective. Well, that's what the vlogs are for. The vlogs record my perspective. So a scientist, another person doing research on stuff I've done, can go back and say, okay, here he is, and here's his views, and here's how that developed, here's how this developed. And they can see a path from the initial thought, the evolution of the thought, from uh, in, in in some cases, going from thought or concept to reality, and this is what a vlog, and particularly a scientific vlog, is for. It's not necessarily there to be made, to make money with. It doesn't mean I can't make money with it. It's, at this point in time, it's not there. All the components I need uh, to make some uh, additional money. I've already got enough money coming in already to make additional money. Uh, just isn't there yet. It's not 
uh, completely put together. It's coming together, but again, it's part it's part of a process. It's part part of the various things that sort of have to go on, uh, and it's not going to happen overnight. It's going to be something that that is, in many ways, further on down the line. So, anyways, uh, I'm going on to the new menu now. This is um. Edit, editing, uh, I like the rain, it stopped. Uh, it is uh, a lower carbohydrate uh, diet than it was on before. Uh, when the summer comes along, as the temperatures start to heat up, uh, I'll have to drop my carbs even further and move from sort of called, called the, the exothermic uh, organic chemistry in, within the body to an endothermic, and that's primarily a protein diet with enough carbohydrates so that the proteins can digest properly. So, anyways, uh, I think that's going to be it for now. I will see you in a couple of hours. I don't know what's going to happen. Well, I'll see you later. Anyways, I don't know what's a couple of hours. Uh, I don't know what's happening next. Well, uh, the immediate next is breakfast and TV, uh, but I might stay up past that and do a, a, a prayer meditation. It will last for about four hours, but I might not do that because I'm going to church tonight for another prayer meditation, but I also have to do some repair work on the sound system. So uh, we'll see how what I end up doing.